What's going on everyone? It's Marcellus back with another video. Today we got to talk about Ethereum because Ethereum is doing some interesting stuff on here on the technical. So we're going to talk about that as well. Definitely hit the like button and subscribe. Remember, I'm not a financial advisor. None of this is financial advice. Leave a comment in the comment section and let me know what you all want me to go over next. And also don't forget to check out CryptoMillionaires.shop for the best Crypto Millionaires merch. We have the best merch inside of the game. So definitely check out CryptoMillionaires.shop for the best Crypto Millionaires merch inside of the crypto industry. But anyways, let's move on and talk about Ethereum because we got to talk about the technical analysis here for Ethereum. As you can see, Ethereum is up by one or by 0.1% in the last 24 hours. But yeah, Ethereum is you know pretty much moving sideways right now. But let's talk about what we got going on inside these technicals. So first things first, looking back to where we were back in the 10th of March is what's looking like a bottom to us, right? It looks like we bottomed out over here before we started the rise, right? It looks like we bottomed out at $1,376, $1,376. So that's looking like a good bottom for us. So obviously that's our bottom support. So that's pretty good right here. These indicators for the green areas, it shows our supply and demand for more demand. Right. And then for the red indicators, it shows supply and demand of less demand. So we got less demand up here. We got more demand up here. So we got support. We got support down here, resistance up here, all that good stuff. So right now, what you're seeing is we're actually inside of this bottom area down here on the support area, which is pretty good because as it's showing, we have more demand and it's showing high activity, which is typically institutional investors, large you know whales and dark pools and stuff like that we typically start to get more buying down there now on the oscillator you can see there is a contradiction on the oscillator whereas right now we're down here in this green area also we have high activity so you would think that it's going to be high buying activity you also have on here on the oscillator where it's showing that we're overbought and we're covering downwards almost as if we we're getting another selling wave but what I think is going to happen with this is it's going to curve downwards like this, but it's going to curve back upwards. And we're probably going to see another buying wave for the oscillator. We're probably going to see another increase inside of the price of Ethereum, right? There's always the possibility that we continue to go down. But I think Ethereum will probably try to make its way back up. I still think that Bitcoin is also bullish, right? This is something that a lot of people have been talking about. I think the crypto market is kind of bullish right now. And if it can pass 30K Bitcoin, then that can confirm our bull market for Bitcoin and for the whole overall crypto market if Bitcoin could pass 30K. And that's kind of the same, same thing with uh, Ethereum reaching 2K. Like, right, if Ethereum reaches 2K, we kind of just confirmed our bull market. So that's why we're pushing so hard to get back above three, uh, 2K here for Bit, uh, Ethereum. I almost said 3K. But yeah, we're trying to get it back above 2K for Ethereum. We literally haven't been there since last May of last year. So it's it's definitely the area where we're trying to get to desperately. We're trying to get back to 2K. So I think 2K would probably end up confirming that we're actually bullish in the crypto market for Ethereum. And then 30K Bitcoin would also be declaring that bull market for uh, Bitcoin. So yeah, we got to wait for those two levels. Now, all the way up here, you know, we have $1,833 as our resistance here with Ethereum. So obviously it'll be a little bit harder to get past this area because, you know, that's where our resistance is. So it's going to be a little bit harder for Ethereum to get past 1850. We've been stuck here for more than a week, uh, actually for a while. We haven't been able to get above this area for a very long time. Like we've really been stuck at the same resistance if you think about it it does not want to get above 1840 like at all like it got above it over here but it went up to like 1845 and then it got rejected it went down so 1840 is really what ethereum needs to work on breaking we need to break that level in order to stay bullish here with ethereum now going over here to the uh, four hour chart let's let this load up all right there it is all right so here on the four hour chart, you can see we are working our way up here to this red area. So the red area is our less demand area, obviously. So it's more like our resistance area, right? So we're working our way back up there. But what you can see that just happened here like multiple times, like we got we went up above that resistance, got rejected. Went up above it, got rejected. Up above it, got rejected. So if we do it again, where we come up above this area and get rejected again, literally the same every single time, it's like... <laughs> A downward downward pattern and obviously we would go to the second uh support down here at about 1600 really 1595 so yeah about 1600 we would go down to that support level if we get rejected right but i think that there's going to be this last pump inside the overall crypto market that it literally makes us bullish so i think it's going to happen the same thing with bitcoin here bitcoin's going to probably end up going to 30k ethereum is going to end up going to 2k and then you're going to see a pullback after that happens but it's not going to pull all the way down to like 20k Bitcoin. It's not going to pull all the way down to $1,500 Ethereum. 
Like what I'm seeing here is we go up to 2K and then pull back down to like 1900, 1800, possibly 17, and then another major pump back up to like 35K, 40K. So I think that this is the start of the bull market. I mean, if you think about it, it's a, almost a whole year before our next um, before our next Bitcoin halving. So when you look at it from that perspective, typically a year before the halving, we always start to go up and rise in crypto. So this is pretty much what we're having here inside of uh, the crypto market. So yeah, I'll keep following this and I'll keep letting you know uh, what's going on with Ethereum. Let me know in the comment section too, if you want me to cover Ethereum more often, we can definitely do that. And um, moving on from here, let's go over some other stuff. So this is an interesting article by Coindesk. They said Ethereum usage will drop if the blockchain doesn't boost speed. That's what Bank of America said. And I want to talk about how this is a flawed approach because what about optimism? What about Arbitrum? What about all these other layer twos? What about Shibarium being built? What about all these other layer twos on Ethereum that are literally helping with the blockchain speeding up? So I think that's this is definitely debunked easily. Uh, maybe Bank of America doesn't know much about crypto no they, they definitely have crypto analysts they definitely have crypto analysts but like i was saying though um yeah bank of america i would say that this one statement is wrong though because if you think about it like all these layer twos they are right if we can't boost speed then um ethereum usage will drop if the speed doesn't boost and if the lower price doesn't boost right like if the lower gas prices don't you know go down if the lower if the gas prices don't go down if the usage doesn't go up then obviously, yeah, yeah, we'll definitely see the blockchain, you know, lower inside of usage. But what I believe here, you know, we're getting all these layer twos is going to make it cheaper. It's going to make it faster. So I don't think it's going to be a problem at all. I don't think we're going to have that problem. But anyways, uh, yeah, that's what Bank of America was saying. So I thought that was pretty interesting. Um, they noted over here that Ethereum smart contract enabled platform gave it a first mover advantage as app developers gravitated to the platform, which led to network effects as the number of decentralized apps and users grew. That early success, however, was a double edged sword as the large number of transactions resulted in network congestion. And that's exactly why we got optimism, exactly why we got Arbitrum, why we got we got all this stuff, all of these layer twos, literally layer twos coming out of nowhere. And then you got stuff building on Bitcoin like stacks. So yeah, layer twos, that layer twos are like the holy grail. They're gonna help build up these larger blockchains. So yeah, I wouldn't worry about that at all. Now, as of this though, Matter Labs opens SK Zinc, uh, which is zero knowledge. So they also call them SK ZK rollups on uh Polygon. This is ZK, not SK, but yeah, they're called ZK rollups on Polygon, ZK Sync here. So it's now on Ethereum. So Matter Labs opened ZK Sync era to users claiming first in zero knowledge tech on Ethereum. So the first zero knowledge tech on Polygon, ZK Rollups. First zero knowledge tech on Ethereum, ZK Sync. So now we got ZK Sync, which is zero knowledge, you know, pretty much production on Ethereum. So you would have zero knowledge of coding and all that and development and literally make projects. So this is pretty interesting to see. It's a whole new era of crypto. Now, after ZK Sync era was launched only for developers last month, the project took the additional step Friday of opening to general users. So the latest push comes just days ahead of the rival Polygon Systems planned rollout Monday of its own zero-knowledge Ethereum virtual machine. So this is pretty interesting. Now, it says the race between Ethereum scaling platforms to come out with a zero-knowledge Ethereum virtual machine seen as a key event in lighting and speeding up blockchain transactions, which definitely, um, you know, crosses out what Bank of America said. And then also reducing the cost, which crosses out also what I mentioned. And then culminated uh, Friday as Matter Labs opened its ZK Sync, which is definitely what we needed. So that's pretty cool. They launched it. It launched last month for developers only and is now also open to general traders and general users. So that's pretty cool as well. Uh, well, I'll keep I'll keep you all updated on this. It says that so, the so-called ZK rollups are a type of blockchain scaling system uh, based on cryptography known as zero knowledge pro proofs, blah, 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 blah. I don't really have to explain it. I mean, if, if you all want me to explain it, I'll make a whole video on, on ZK rollups and ZK sync. So let me know in the description or in the comments if you want me to make a whole video on ZK sync and ZK rollups. I'll do that for you all if you want. But anyways, yeah, this is definitely good. It definitely invalidates what um, Bank of America just said because speed is being increased with these and costs are being decreased. So it's all we need.
But yeah, this is pretty much all I got here for the uh, technical analysis. So let me know exactly what you think about this. Let me know what you think about Ethereum. Do you think it's bullish? Do you think it's bearish? Let me know what you think. Do you think the resistance for Bitcoin is 30K? And do, and do you also think that that threshold leading to the bull market is a 30K Bitcoin or a $2,000 Ethereum? I think that's the threshold. Once we pass those areas, it's straight to the moon from there. That's that's what I believe. But anyways, this is pretty much all I got for you all today. Hit the like button and then subscribe. Remember, I'm not a financial advisor. None of this is financial advice. Leave a comment in the comment section. Let me know what you all want me to go over next. And also definitely come over here to CryptoMillionaires.shop to check out the best Crypto Millionaires merch inside of the industry. And as always, I'll be back with another video.